I framed out all these window openings in this dust creek wall with rough timber from the mill. But as you can see, we got a little daylight showing there, so let's trim them out. I picked up a bunch of granite countertop drops off of Craigslist for free. And in order to cut them, I'm going to pull the wood blade off the saw here and put on a diamond blade. I found one laying around that I thought might have enough to get her done. And so putting that diamond blade onto the saw so that we can rip this section of granite down to about five inches. Measure the distance from the edge of the soft shoe. We got one and nine sixteenths. So I'll use this blue tape to put my marks on so it doesn't wash off once the water gets involved. Then we just clamp a straight edge, in this case a six foot level, to the work at both those points. And then I should just be able to follow that fence and get a good straight cut. For lubrication, I filled this screw bucket up with water and drilled a hole in it, and then the stick allows me to regulate the water flow. And boy, sure enough, this blade was too cached to get the job done. So I left the chickens in charge of the job site while I ran into town and dropped $39 on a new blade. But once we got that onto the saw, things went much smoother. And yeah, just a matter of pushing my saw through this work and keeping the water dripping to keep the blade from wearing out instantly and sure enough got a pretty good cut took two pieces to cover this sill with what would be called a boot then i found a chunk of cedar that i'd used for a couple other purposes and got it cut down to the right size for an apron on this and sanded it down with 150 And then came in with the router with a half inch round over bit. I like to come in from the outside on this end grain to keep the wood from splintering out. And then the opposite arm with the grain cut, cut out of the corners. And we just pulled this bull nose around it once again with the 150 grit to get all the tool marks out and get everything sanded down smooth and basically just pulled all those corners and edges and get everything nice and smooth all the way around and then up to the 220 for a final pass to give this a nice smooth finish once that was done dusted it all off and then we're just using linseed oil with a citrus solvent and brushing that in to reveal the beauty of the cedar wood because it's been out in the weather we get these nice dark places where it's oxidized and ended up looking like a nice piece of cedar candy when it was all said and done let that cure out in the barn to off gas for 24 hours before installing it then I also had a deal where a guy liked my gate and asked me to build him one and in part of payment for that he had a bunch of cedar that had been stripped out of a sauna and it's just been sitting up here in a pile up on my material yard and so gathered up a bunch of that and got to cleaning it up I thought I might be able to get it pretty with just the 150, but it was a little more stubborn than that. So I broke out the electric plane and planed off the faces I was going to be using of enough wood to do the casing around the window. And then labeled everything where it was going to go. And then took my lovely table saw and set it just to rip the tongues off of some of these boards I would bullnose. The saw has been through it and been out in the weather a lot, but it still does a pretty fine job. So I just ripped those tongues off of the pieces that would take a bullnose, ran all those through, and then back over 
to do the sanding work and the bullnosing work. All my helpers here underfoot all the time. You got those set up on the sawhorse, and so basically I'm just pulling the bullnose on the edge that's facing me on this whole stack of material. And that half inch again on all of them. By stacking this work up, I can just run through one, get it out of my way, and run the next one. Like so. Didn't have any tear out, which was nice. And then came through with 150 and cleaned up all that. These ends that are particularly oxidized, I'm going to cut off in the final uh, fit of all of this. And then back with the linseed oil and the citrus solvent. Got all those oiled up. They actually look pretty good considering what they've been through. There they all are. Ready to go. And once again, I let these cure for 24 hours in the barn. So the house wouldn't be filled with the smell of that solvent. And time to install. So a big goop of caulk here in all of these corners where the drafts were. I put this little shim in because the pitch on that sill is rather severe. So just this little 16th of an inch shim. And then using this uh, PL adhesive to stick the granite down. Should be sufficient to keep it in place. And these fit just right under the window parts there. And flush with the, the framing underneath. So I've got those stuck in there. And marked my holes to attach this apron, the framing, and the countersink bit to leave me a 3 8 hole that I could then dowel to cover my screw holes. Then I'm using 3 inch construction screws to anchor this solidly to the framing. Normally the boot would lap over that apron, but given the material I've got, everything's kind of a little bit backwards as far as where the, the bull noses go. On this top part, I made a couple of mistakes. I ripped that one a little too short, but the rough material is not consistent anyway. So once I slipped my bullnose in there, I was able to give myself a line and then just made relief cuts down to it. And then I can come back in with the framing chisel and remove this material to give myself a nice flush surface took uh, a bit of doing to get this done and of course uncomfortable overhead but it took about an hour and I got all this chisel back so that I could then attach this piece and then the final will go on top of that and cover up all that rough timber. Doing these inside cuts a good trick to get an accurate measurement is to come down 10 inches from the top and then measure up from the bottom and add the two together rather than bending the tape and, and being approximate about it. So I came up with my measurement 46 and an eighth and mark that there just in case I get confused. Then cut that dark bit off the end, make my measurement. And to get a good tight fit here, I'm going to try to cut halfway through my pencil mark. So I should be a, a little long. And sure enough, we hit it about halfway on that mark and then go in and test the fit. And see, I've got a little delaminating plaster there that I'll deal with in a future video. I forgot to wet that wall before I plastered it. So I'll make the cut. Just take a half blade off and still a little long so another good trick push the work up against the blade and then lift it and then it'll take off about a sixth to fourth there so with that cut we end up being just perfect and it goes and i can put the bullnose piece on now i'm cutting it to leave about a quarter inch below that top piece and then 
pull the scribe line in both directions off of the work that's already installed. And then it's just a matter of a little bit of art to trace that bullnose on there. And though I've got about seven coping saws, I couldn't find any of them, so out comes the scroll saw. That fits just right in there. After I get this tacked in for these uh, face casings, I'm going to attach through that piece I just installed into this piece, just to get my reveal right all the way down, and then just going in with the 2 inch 18 gauge brads to hold that in place. And we look something like that, which works for me. Both sides done. And then it's a matter of getting to this crown piece that'll go in here. And I had a chunk of cottonwood that I'd milled previously that had been laying outside. It looked like this. A little twisty, but otherwise stable. And I found a good section of it that was reasonably straight and cut it to length. And left a little extra so that once I had a true edge of this live edge slab, I could make more accurate cuts to cut it to shape. So just cut it down to length. And then it's a matter of uh, putting a string line on it and ripping the long cut. It does not have to be perfect here because it's not really joining up to other wood. But it ended up being pretty good even just freehand and following that chalk line. And with that cut, we can do a little surface work with the planer. And then we can come in and use the square to get a good square edge. Make that cut and then back again with that half inch round over. Do the non-live edge side. I left the top with the live edge. And I just pulled this bone nose all the way around and then back at it with a random orbital sander. Same process as before. Got it all cleaned up. just a little bit on the live edge. So we get a nice smooth cottonwood finish here. Can really be a lovely wood. Not very stable, but in applications like this it works pretty well. Here it is with the oil on it. Ready to go. Now I'm using the countersink bit at a 45 degree angle because I want to put some pegs to hang things so I can dry herbs and things like that. And extending that a little bit with a 3 8 bit and then coming back in with this countersink for where the 4 inch construction screw will actually attach this to that piece I chiseled out. And up we go. Making sure I've got the right offset. And then in with these four inch construction screws that'll hold this steady. There was a little bit of a warp to this board, but with these long screws, I was able to suck it in nice and tight all the way around. And there she is. You can see we've got a pretty good reveal off of that cedar bull nose. And then for dowels, just went out and found some of this coyote willow that was the right diameter. Whittled up a couple of pegs, and then those go in here. And then I can dry herbs on those. And then the lower apron portion also used the willow to dowel that, and then just cut it off the pull saw. There we go. 
So just using garbage and uh, materials reclaimed from other sources, we're able to get this all trimmed out, draft free, and looking a lot more finished than it was before. Be sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more of these little projects that I've got going on this winter. And yeah, good stuff from the summer months as well.